Hi everybody, welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel and podcast. It's Daryl here and we're back for yet another, he says as he rolls his eyes, yet another match preview as Newcastle United head down into the capital and along the Thames to Putney to face Fulham at Craven Cottage on Saturday afternoon. It's a three o'clock kickoff on Saturday afternoon and I wish everybody going down Godspeed because there's a certain train strike happening and I know that it's going to be a bit of a hectic day and if you are coming back on Saturday night, make sure you've got your jet Right, uh, jet powered uh, roller skates on, I think, to get yourself back across <laughs> London at King's Cross because uh, that last train leaves at six. And if you miss it, you might be up a creek without a paddle. Um, right, so we're going to very quickly, well, very quickly move on to talk about this game. But before we get into that, I'm going to quickly say hello to Andy and Nickel who are joining us for this one. How are you doing, lads? All right, yes. Glad I'm not trying to rush around London for a train. You scared me <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> Nickel, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, good, yeah. We're just uh, obviously recording this the day after Everton at home last night. So, yeah. um, just been reflecting on that really today. And, um, yeah, looking forward to trying putting things right on Saturday. By Absolutely. reflecting, do you mean your head against a wall at Paul Dummett? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've been doing. <laughs> hey, God. I think Let's do it. On. <laughs> yes, and just before we get into the action on this match preview, we're going to have a quick word from our sponsor. The Gallagher Shots Match Preview is brought to you by Magpin. Magpin are the go-to site for high-quality, unofficial enamel pin badges of Newcastle United players, legends and retro kits. For more information, visit their website at magpinbadges.bigcartel.com. Thank you very much, Scott. Now, Newcastle United at Fulham. Um, with time of recording on this one's a little bit strange for this week because we're in the middle of a Premier League game week. Um, so the table is a tiny little bit skewed and I've got a quick um, league table here for us in the little mini league that we're concerned about at the minute. Um, still a point behind West Ham after their draw at home to Spurs last night. So they're on 31 games played with 45 points. We're 30 games played and 44 points. And then behind us we have Brighton who played tonight at the time of recording um, on 29 games with 42 points. Uh, Wolves and Bournemouth. 30 games played, 42 points for Wolves, 41 points uh, for Bournemouth. And Chelsea down in 12th. Now we've added another team because of the result for Bournemouth last night. Um, and Chelsea sit currently in 12th on 40 points, but haven't only played 28 games. So it is starting to really get a little bit congested for some of the teams in this little mini league that's going on in the middle of the table. Um, and... We obviously things will change as the games are played later tonight at time of recording, so we'll have a clearer idea right before the game on on Saturday. But this is the 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 stuff that we have to work with at present. Um. So yes, Fulham versus Newcastle United. Previous games. So our most recent trip to the cottage came back in January, right at the back end of January, on our little FA Cup run. And we went down there on the Saturday night to play Fulham with a 7 o'clock kickoff. 2 0 win for Newcastle United in that game. Goals from Longstaff and Burn saw us through to round four. And then in the reverse fixture, that's the return game at St James's earlier this season. It was a very comfortable in the end 3 0 victory for Newcastle. Um, and that was played in mid December. So that was just before everything went to went to pot, really, in terms of form and injuries and God knows what else. Um, goals coming from Lewis Miley, Miguel Almiron, and Big Dan Burn, and he should have added to his tally last night, but we're not going into that because we'll put that game to bed. Um, yeah, and in the last time that we played Fulham at the Cottage in the Premier League, people remember this game because there's a, a certainly one specific goal in that game that was an absolute worldie, and it's Fulham 1, Newcastle United 4, and that was in October of 2022. Um, goal scorers for us were Wilson, Miguel Almiron with two. That first one was an absolute screamer with the outside of his foot. Um on the volley in the box and obviously Sean Longstaff adding to the numbers there as well. So recent games, and that's just three and that's in all competitions. Those recent three games that we played against Fulham, we've done quite well. We've been quite fortunate in those games. And the nice little stat I've got to, to reel off to you boys is we are looking for our fifth consecutive win at Fulham in all competitions. So I have to include all competitions because of that FA Cup game back in January. And can you, do you think you can tell me when we last lost a game at the cottage? Championship season. Spot on, Andy. First game of the season. That's and I remember that because 
Yeah. Because yeah. um, they posted something on Twitter after saying welcome to the championship. And yes. I think we repaid them the favour at the end of the season when we won the league. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, that's we've won every God, game. That was a done, dark time. <laughs> every every, every game that we've uh, played at the cottage since that one nil defeat, we've done very well in. I think there's also um, a four nil win in there as well. Rafa's last game. <clears throat> well, um, I think the team we'll be putting out will be very similar to that team as well. To be I'll honest, tell you what, the way things yeah, are at the minute. Yeah, not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, yeah, and we'll also, give Ron Bonner a call there. Hi, why not? He'd do a job um, at the minute, like he'd have done a job would. against Everton the way they were hiding the ball forward. <laughs> um, and also on top of that, we are going to be going into this game looking to complete our second double of the season, having earlier completed that first one against Aston Villa when we beat them 3 1. Was it 3 1 down at Villa mm. Park? Um, so yeah, we're after doing my second double of the season. Um, boys, it is going to be an interesting one, and you know, we have been very fortunate with our run of results down there. Um and you know it's it's we are we are gonna get onto it, but we are late starting to scrape the barrel and, and run at the bare bones and we're very much finding ourselves in a bit of a deja vu situation because it, it we're starting to resemble exactly what happened in December when we had a limited amount of players available to us and you know the lads were flogging themselves on the pitch every week and we just were struggling for form. Um, so far, so good. At the moment, we are starting to seek some cracks in in, in the squad. Um, those injuries are going to start really taking their toll. And you know, we saw um on Tuesday night in the Everton game that Lewis Hall was withdrawn after um f- well for fatigue really because he hasn't really played that many minutes and he's really put himself around about the pitch on on Tuesday night. Um. And before we move on to talk about the team and like Andy's going to cover the injuries for us, um, Card Watch is going to come straight back in a mini cameo from Ref Watch. And it can be very brief. Oh, I can do it in one sentence this time because Gordon is going to return from suspension for this game. And both him and Bruno have two games to go before the cut-off point. Um, Gordon also has the advantage of an extra yellow card, which if you watch the Everton preview, we sort of explained how that was working because he's, he's two yellow cards don't add to his tally and all that. So there are positives there. The positives two are on the horizon. For Bruno. That's unreal how long. Two how long has he gone now? Is that like 13 games, something like that? So, something like that. It feels like it's been half... half Absolutely unreal. He put, tackle in, he put a slide yeah. tackle in. He put a slide tackle against Everton, and I was like, "Oh, what are you doing, man?" <laughs> he had he had his hands all over a couple of the midfielders as well. And I, was like, I know. Oh, referee, don't pull him up on that, Jesus. Um, but yeah. So Andy, you're going to talk to us about some some team news and some injuries there. Crack on. Yeah, I just want to take up the entire video with my voice, so I thought I'd take the injuries. <laughs> <laughs> so used to just have a kip for half an hour, and I'll, I'll, ra- logs, that's for sure. <laughs> I'll rattle them all off. Well, obviously, we've talked about in- injuries to death, um, mm. and obviously the Everton game was another game where so many times people just groaning because people are just keeling over and, and all sorts. <laughs> the whole one was weird because there was one point where he went down, but I think... Oh, sorry, it was Kraft. Kraft went down, but I think he went down because he knew Murphy was knackered because there was a point in the game where Murphy was absolutely crocked and yes. we were trying to sort of do the tactical going down. Uh, slight um, aside, Dubravka is terrible at doing the tactical injury. Unlike Pope, he goes down for like five seconds and gets back up straight away, whereas Pope used to stay down for a good 15 minutes. But I thought um, people might have seen this online. Um, the 11 we can put out if we just pick the injured players. So I thought I'd rattle it off. Um, mm-hmm. Because it's quite funny how it actually you can play our injured eleven in the right formation and it still works the same. <laughs> it's like it's not even like we've got like six defenders injured. We've got four defenders, three midfielders, three strikers, <laughs> uh, and a keeper. It's mad. So I'll ask you to I'll ask you to put this team up against the team that's likely to start okay. against Fulham, and I'll ask you for who you think would come out on top in this game. So we'll say neutral venue, Eddie Howe manages both teams. Um, <laughs> bit of like a soccer aid special. So the injured 11 is Pope in goal, Trippier right back. And this is on the presumption that these players aren't back yet. Uh, mm. Trippier right back, Lascelles and Botman centre half, Matt Target left back, forgot about him. Uh, midfield three of Miley, Tonali and Joe Linton. That's a sensational midfield. A sensational uh, midfield. Front three of Almiron, Wilson and had to be a bit creative and put Livermento left wing because... Up last week, we could have put Gordon there, but mm. um, looking at that team, Daryl, who's winning that game? 
I tell you what, it it would be a hell of a game, like wouldn't it? It'd be a very barnstorm, and I, you know what it is. I, I feel like just because of that midfield three, it might be the injured eleven that'll do it in the goalkeeper as well. Nickel. Yeah, I agree. I think <laughs> I, I, to be honest, I could have I could have done it when you said goalkeeper right back. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, good point. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, I think I think the injured eleven. It's mad that isn't it, but it's it's funny as well because I I, I thought that, but then I think any team that's got. Gordon, Isak, and Bruno is giving any team in the Premier League a good run for its money. So I was yeah. trying to flip. I was trying to flip it the other way to be like, well, what what does what does the uh, non-injured eleven have over the injured eleven? And it's it's probably technical quality, but not running. I would say. <laughs> so you look at that injured eleven, and it's like Joe Linton we're missing, Almiron we're missing, Trippier's experience, Botman when he's at his best, and also Pope who knows how. He can actually catch the ball anywhere in his 18-yard box and not just on his line um, <laughs> as well. So I'll put that one to our lovely listeners and viewers as well as to who you think would win that game. But I just thought it was funny to look at it that way around and how you could actually play a perfect 11. So hopefully mm. that becomes harder and harder to do as the weeks go by because it's getting beyond a joke. I think we don't quite know exactly what's wrong with Kraft, exactly what's wrong uh, with Hall. Hall, there was one point it looked like he was holding his side, but then it looked then there was talk of it being cramp and all sorts of other things. Yeah. Um Shah had three or four different looking injuries in the Everton game, but seemed to come through. I'm pretty sure he's just you know, in football manager where you just keep giving him the toe injection over and over again. <laughs> and, to, <laughs> and just hope that it doesn't become a recurring injury. Yeah. Um so like you say, it's absolutely bare bones. And just as a final thing in injuries, because I know it's, it's boring at this point to discuss injuries, but there was a stat from Ben Dinnery on Twitter. I don't know if anyone saw it. I think it went no, around no. our group, didn't it? Uh, where he he sort of pulled some stats. I won't go into the details of it, but he pulled stats of when Howe was Bournemouth manager to when Howe was Newcastle manager. And the number of injuries is the exact same number per thousand right. minutes played. I think it was wow. something like 8.7 injuries per thousand minutes which out of context means absolutely nothing but he said to compare the two is mental and at Bournemouth there was lots of ACL injuries lots of muscle tears so one for maybe another podcast but one to get people thinking is to be like yeah. mm, are we just unlucky here or is there is it to do with the style of play or his backroom team or whatever but um, I think we just need to get through these nice run of fixtures we need to start using that phrase, you like Daryl again, clean bill of health. Yeah. No new injuries at the end of every game is what we need, but we're, mm-hmm. we're getting some getting people back. And then I think Willock's one where he's come back, but is he really right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's, yeah. it's just, just annoying. Um, so we need to just see a, a 90 minutes where we can make a few subs and, um, and get out the other end of it. So we shall see. So it's still not great. But the starting eleven, even though it is worse than the injured eleven, um, <laughs> it's still a good is still a good side, and we oh, should yeah, be absolutely. we should be beating a lot of these teams we're playing. I mean, I mean the way that, the way they're coming through these games, and, and we're still where we are in the league, given everything mm. that we've been going through, it's it's definitely some sort of miracle, isn't it? And um, just to pour even more petrol on everybody's flames and misery, um, there was a couple of bits doing the rounds on socials in the dark corners of socials last night. Um, and we can expect Almiron and Livermento to be missing for the, at least the next four weeks. And then I wouldn't expect to see Kieran Trippier back until the Crystal Palace game on the 24th as well. So those three boys are going to be out for a good little while yet. So we've really got to manage the squad. And again, like, like you said, there, it's, it's we are down at the bare bones and there's a couple of youth players on the bench against Everton on Tuesday night. So it's going to be really dicey. Um before, I've got one more stat to get, but I want to go through quickly and we're going to talk, uh, talk about the opposition. And, uh, and Nicola, you've been looking into Fulham for us. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've just had a look at some of the, the previous results and they put, they also played on Tuesday night. Um, they played Forest away um, and lost 3-1. Um, Forest um, blew them away, really, in the first half. Um, they were 2-0 down after half an hour. Marco Silver made three changes after half an hour, and then they were down. Then they were down. They were still. They went down three 0 at half time. And um, to be fair, Forrest um, looked like they were getting them on the transition and were just were just battering them with every chance that they went forward. Um, it looked was like it at Fulham? Were, it was at the. Um, it was at Forest. At Forest, right? Yeah. Um, second half, it looked like they got a bit better. Uh, so they have got a bit of fight in them, um, and they did get an early go back in the second half, but. Um, I think they're a bit. Um, they remind me sort of of, of what you, we used to be. A bit of well, kind of what we're our 
turning into a little bit at the minute. A bit <laughs> of a, a bit of an up and down team where you're not sure what, what side you're going to get. Um, I think, especially away from home as well, listening to some of their their fans, um, they're not happy with the away form at all. Um, but at home, they seem to be to be quite strong. Um, so the last five is obviously last night lost. 3-1 to Forest, drew drew away to Sheffield United, 3-3. Three, three. Um, they came from behind but, in that one as well, didn't they, at Sheffield? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, they've got they've got some quality players, so I think it's maybe just defensively where they're, they're struggling away from home. Um, but before the international break, they beat Spurs at home 3-0, which mm-hmm. was a, a shock result, really. Um, but the week before, had lost 2-1 away at Wolves. Um, and again, at home, had beaten Brighton 3-0. Um, and the game just before that, they'd beat Man United away as well. So, as you can see from them, just the previous um, sort of six games, they're very up and down um, and a bit unpredictable. Um, but with them being at home, I would say that they're going to be a bit stronger than what they were against Forest in the Well, they've just got a bad game out of the system as well, so this will be good for them yeah. <laughs> coming to. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. And, and con- contrast to us, they actually have no injuries in their squad. Um, so they've got, um, you know, a full bill of health. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they've got a full sort of squad to select from, and, and I'm sure they'll be raring to go after after last night um, last night's battering at Nottingham Forest. Yeah, you mentioned their inconsistencies, and you know what it is? They're not, you know, we we mentioned Fulham as being inconsistent. We have had a period of inconsistency as well as you rightly say, and. There are another like there's a number of teams at the minute really going through this patch of inconsistency. I think Spurs have come under criticism for for it as well. Um, you can look at the likes of maybe Bournemouth, Brentford have been really off off the pace this season compared to where they were. Wolves have gone through patches of inconsistency as well. Uh, Brighton the same. You know, there's a lot of teams really just struggling to find a decent run of form. Um, and I think that's probably why we find. Sorry, go on, Neil. Do you think that's because in the Premier League, every team is trying to play this really attractive style of attacking football and they're all trying to go for it and the fans are demanding that sort of mm. attacking look? That, you know, I don't want to sound like Roy Keane here, but the defence <laughs> the defense is like uh, uh, suffering for it in a way. I mean, yeah. we're getting great like games like Saturday, 4-3, mm-hmm. West Ham. There's a lot of goals in the league. And do you think that's maybe just why a lot of teams, especially around the mid-table, are very up and down? Yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot of these games are hanging on the knife edge, aren't they? It's like, mm. it's going to go one way or the other, and they're all very close games. Um, great viewing, I think, great viewing, like. So, oh, yeah. yeah, for the neutral, it's fantastic. And, but and when it's your team, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's why we now find ourselves in the position where we have got this little mini league in the middle of the table with these five or six, and maybe... To be honest, you could probably include Fulham in that because they're only a point behind Chelsea. Um, so there's a, a little gap there of, of well, what have I got there? I, I think the, teams. I think the gap between top and bottom, well, from I guess Man City's the outlier, but I think the gap's closed with the league generally. I think even five years mm. ago, the team in fourth and the team in tenth were miles apart from each other. Yeah. Whereas I think I think now, and it probably is that, it probably is better coaches coming in and everything like that and playing better tactics. The difference between like I mean, who's in fifth now? Man United to mm-hmm. Chelsea in twelfth is not that big, really, is it? Yeah. Whereas previously, you'd have the mid-table, which would just be dross teams, really. Then you would have the big six, and then you would have the the proper dross down in the bottom. Whereas mm-hmm. th- that middle patch of teams are all pretty good now, um, yeah. which is why it was so weird playing Everton and seeing a team just hump it long from minute one because that's so unusual now. Like you don't even like teams coming up like Burnley. Like trying to play proper football and things like that. That's probably half the reason, like you say. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, yeah. look at Luton this season. They've they've been good to watch Luton, and they give yeah. they give us two really good games. Uh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, maybe that's a reason why teams are a bit up and down. Um, Quite possibly, yeah. And um, well, we've picked a tough time to try and take over the league, really, haven't we? As as with the new owners, when all the yeah. other teams are seemingly starting to play better football, probably would have been easier ten years ago. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so. Before we start moving on to how we think the team will line up, which isn't going to necessarily be a very hard thing to, to go through, to be honest, but uh, I've got the the record for ourselves down at Fulham, so Newcastle United at Fulham. Just now, I did talk about the FA Cup earlier on, so this one is just in the Premier League. Um, we've had 14 games down in Fulham, and I can't just say Craven Cottage because we had two seasons where they were playing at Loftus Road while Craven Cottage was developed the first time around. 
Um, so there's 14 games away to Fulham. Five wins for Newcastle, no draws at all, and nine losses. So we don't get draws down there, which is interesting. Um, maybe we'll get one on Saturday just to, to book the trend, you never know. Um, yeah, and that obviously includes those two games down at Loftus Road as well. Um, so as we think about that, we'll have to start thinking about how the team may possibly line up. I say possibly, I think it's pretty much going to pick itself, isn't it? Um, so... We have to go on the assumption that I think it's we're probably safe to assume that Hall and Kraft will be fine. Um, I, I mean, I hope so. DMA, if they're not, then we're really up a creek. Um, but yeah, so we'll have Dubravka in goal back four. You're probably looking at Kraft again, Shea, Burn, and Hall. Uh, midfield again, it's I was quite. I was actually quite surprised that Anderson started on Tuesday night. Um, and I was really impressed with how him and Hall linked up on that side of the pitch as well. They were yeah. quite happy to to swap around and interchange, much like the old Joe Linton and Willock days, um, when they used to swap around in that in that um, little hole as well. So I think we'll probably see the same. In fact, it's probably just going to be the same eleven as it was on Tuesday night. To be fair, uh, well, no, because we can have Anthony Gordon back, aren't we? Yeah. So, yeah. How would you do it then? Would you we'll, we'll, we can bypass the midfield because it's going to pick itself up pretty much. Um, would you put Gordon on the right and Barnes on the left, or would you do it the other way around? Mm, I think oh. I think Gordon on the right personally. I think he's more, more he's tired. more direct. He's more direct, and he and we've seen him play there. Um, and Barnes, we've seen he does drift inside a lot better, like off the ball. Uh, and he's good at doing the sort of the one twos, and I think with the explosive pace, you want to be on the right hand side, really. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I think we saw Barnes a bit of Barnes' limitations. Not to criticise him because he was obviously an absolute hero against West Ham. I think we saw a bit of his limitations compared to Gordon in that Everton game. There's a couple of times where the pitch opened up, and Gordon would have been able to explode away from the defender. I don't think Barnes really has that in his locker. I don't think he's really like a dribbler of the ball as such mm -hmm. um, over long distance like that. Um, so I think having Gordon back is going to be massive. But I think I don't see Barnes as a right winger because he's all about yeah. getting inside and shooting, isn't he? Whereas Gordon's got a bit more of a different type of game. Um, but who knows? I mean, Murphy did all right, I think, at right wing. I think he was a bit unlucky not to score. He had a couple of good efforts. Uh, yeah. Is that one that Pickford made a really good save for? Um, so that's one area where we, I mean, I don't even know. Do we know if he's injured? <laughs> I'm just like, uh, I think he's fine. I mean, if, if anything, because the way he was hobbling around, like you mentioned earlier in, in that second half, after I, thought, I think he must have like jarred his knee or something in, in a tackle. And um, whether or not Eddie chooses to put Gordon in and go with Gordon and Barnes just to give Murphy that little breather. I mean, in the event that Kraft isn't available, we'll probably see Murphy at right back as well. So, there's a potential that he may be needed elsewhere on the pitch. Um, I do, I do think know... as well, um, just to go back to Everton slightly, when the right-hand side was Kraft, Longstaff and Murphy, that was pretty horrific. So I think yeah. I think we need some someone of Gordon's pace and ability on that right-hand side to help Kraft because he, he doesn't go forward. Longstaff, I know it'll be talked to death on uh, the, all the smiling faces and everything, but he doesn't look himself as well. So mm -hmm. I think um, give what the way the rest of the right-hand side is going to shape up, I think that's another reason to probably stick Gordon there as well. He's that's another one that keeps... Yeah. Uh, three, that. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Um, I just think, I just want to touch on, Andy, yeah. you, said, you said about Barnes, you know, not being the one to, to, to run in the space. Um, I, I'm sure people on this channel have said it before that um, he, he's not that type of player and, you know, we need to realise that he's not he's, he's not he's not an, an Anthony Gordon type player and we definitely missed, we definitely did miss Anthony Gordon last night for the carrying the ball. Yeah. Um, but I think with, with Barnes, we also mentioned it earlier that, you know, players are playing when they're not even 100%. He's another one, really. I know he yes. came on and scored two goals at West Ham. But um, I'm not sure he would have even came on if Almiron hadn't got injured. So he's another one who's playing at probably, well, 80 to 90 percent, maybe. Yeah. Um, same with Anderson, but I thought Anderson was really good. So I, I would stick with him. Um, and I'm not sure yeah. if Joe Willock offered much when he came on on Tuesday. Um, yeah. Well, it was probably a difficult game to come into, to be fair to him. But, you know, um, so yeah, I would go with that three up front. Yeah, absolutely. And it, I know we mentioned it on the Everton preview, but it was really nice to see Alex Isaac score from open play for a change. 
Um, and Great goal. Me, he's he's minted. Really happy. Made me really happy. And I think you know he's. Um, I think I don't even know. He hasn't even scored a goal against Fulham yet, so he needs to tick them off the list. Um, so well, add him to the dog. Goal, add him to the goal. dog walking we'll, meme. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean we'll get. We'll, we will get to that at the very end when we do our predictions. <laughs> but uh, before we move on to the everyone's favourite topic, or everyone's favourite segment, I should say. Um, we'd just like to ask you all that if you are liking the videos to please like and subscribe to the channel on YouTube and um, give us a good rating on Spotify um, click the thumbs up where you are as well um, you can become a member from just two ninety nine a month and that will give you access to the Telegram group and it will give you loads of extra bonus features it will give you early access to videos as well there's a brand new Marvel Decker out this week um, which is a quarter and um, we'll not spoil the result but it's, uh, it's fairly one sided um and again you'll get early access to videos like this one as well and you know there's loads of content coming through at the minute we've got all these previews we've got reactions as well there's a one being recorded or was being recorded as we recorded this one at the same time so we'll, we were simulcasting to some degree as well um and again you'll have the always smiling faces podcast back next monday as well after the fulham game where they'll go through everything with that as well um so yeah we're going to move on to everybody's favorite segment and it is Ref Watch. Get and... in. I'm just going to take a seat sit back. <laughs> <laughs> Get a popcorn. As I, refer to, as I refer to my notes that you can't see because they're off camera. But yeah, um, referee for the game <laughs> on Saturday down at Fulham. Um, it's a very first senior appointment for Sam Allison from Chippenham in Wiltshire. Um, he has refereed Newcastle United in the past on two occasions. But this was at um, reserve game at reserve team level, even, um, and he was uh, he played he didn't play he refereed uh, a two one away win at Brighton in two thousand and sixteen, and a two thousand seventeen one nil win away at West Brom for the reserves. And as far as the data is concerned, they are the only previous games that he's officiated um, and been in the middle for with the club. Um, on top of that, it's actually only his third ever Premier League game. Um, and he only he actually only refereed his first championship game last season. So he's really progressing up the ladder uh, at a rate of knots, um, I think it's fair to say. Um, and I t- I'm just looking at the the scores from his, his two Premier League games that he's done today. And for those of you who were, couldn't cope with the game on Saturday against West Ham, prepare yourselves. Because his first game was the Sheffield United 2 Luton 3 game. And his second one last month was Bournemouth 4 Luton 3. So his games have goals. Let's put it that way. Um, and no. in terms of his record, um, obviously it's it's quite a skewed record because he's only played two, he's only refereed two games in the league this season. Eight yellow cards in those two games, no reds. Um, so again, like a lot of the referees in in the league this season, they're averaging around about four yellow cards a game. Um, and another f- a familiar name um, for VAR for this one, and it's our Aussie mate, Jared Gillis. He's back. Oh, yeah, he's back. He's back. Return of the Mac. He, he went through a, <laughs> a period earlier in the season, uh, back in January, February, um, where he was pretty much involved either in the middle or on VAR. Or it's a conspiracy VAR against Newcastle. That's what yeah. it is. Assistant VAR as he got to at one point just to keep himself involved. So he went through a very, you know, there's a spate of games where he was involved. So he's back, back on the scene again for this one. Um, hopefully we'll have a, a similar result to how he did when he refereed the game at Fulham back in January. So mm, fingers crossed and conspiracies and omens <laughs> and all that sort of thing. You know what I mean? Um, right. So time to try and predict what the hell's going to happen down at the cottage. Um, Nickel, I'm going to come to you first on this one, mate. How do you think it's going to go? Yeah, right, okay. Um, I think... Uh, <laughs> I like when he picks you first, because I can just piggyback off what you said. <laughs> you know what? Hey, come you, him, that's why I'm going with <laughs> Yeah. When you, did your, when you did your opening spiel about, yes. you know, recent games and all that, I, I was I was up here, I was like, oh, you're going to be all right, yeah. <laughs> then, then you started to say a couple of ones that were a bit more... The overall record in the Premier League, you know, like, oh, yeah. maybe not. Um, but I'm still going to go for a Newcastle win, um, two one. And because he likes a goal at Fulham, Dan Burns going to get one. Right. And he was also brilliant against Everton at centre back. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And because he's mint, Isaac's going to get one. And I think for him to have scored, I'm sure the last uh, last night was his 15th goal this season. Mm-hmm. To score that many when he hasn't been fully fit for all of them and he's had so many different wingers either side of him and you know people behind him in midfield is some achievement really. Shows the quality he's got. So he's going to get one too. And for Fulham, I think um, Rodrigo Muniz will get one because he's their top scorer this season yeah. Yeah. with nine goals. With you on that one. Andy, how do you think it's going to go? Piggyback away. Oh, I was thinking before you start speaking. I was thinking two one with a burn goal and uh, Isak. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, funny about Isak. Um, he's not far off the top scorer in the Premier League, is he? Because I think Haaland's only on only on eighteen mm. in the Premier League, and he's just behind that group of Solanke, Salah, Son. I think so. If he he's gets the, another couple of goals, best, um, he's got the best. Ratio per ninety, hasn't he? He's got yeah, he's, and you know who's second best? Second best. No, you know who is second oh, best? Who is second? Chris best? Wood. <laughs> Just think, Chris if we Wood. kept him, we would have had the two most prolific strikers in the league. <laughs> he's been banging them in. To be fair, he's though, been really good. Has. The header he scored last weekend was is so Aye. underrated. Quality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, we can't, we can't keep rem- yeah, we can't <laughs> reminisce about Sorry. him too much, can we? Yeah. Um, yeah, here Loic Remy's banging them in as well somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm t- I'm similar. I think I'm I'm like the whole season. I'm not going to predict a clean sheet because we're mm. like even in Everton where they were offering absolutely nothing, we find a way of conceding a goal. Yeah. Um, not blaming anyone in particular, but it rhymes with plummet. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm thinking I'm thinking similar. I, I'm thinking we, we will score and they will score. It's just can we get the second goal? Because every game. This season, we've had to get two or three goals to get a result, or even just to get a point. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes four goals to get one point. Um, so I'm I'm actually going to say one-one. I think we're not going to have enough in the tank to get the second goal, but I think it'll be a decent performance. And um, part of me is hoping that away from home, the defensive struggles won't be as apparent because we'll be able to sit a bit deeper and get them on the break. So I think it's going to be tight. So I think one-one or two-one, but obviously I've got to put my flag on a mass somewhere. So I am going to say one-one and get accused of being a negative Nelly. But I just think the way we're playing at the minute and being on the bones of the backside like we are, that's what I see happening. Um, I won't predict an Isak goal because it's boring, but he probably will score. <laughs> um, how about Trippier? I'm going to say Trippier's back and he scores a free kick. He's not back though, is he? He's not going to be back with Palace. Come on, he is. He was, he turned <laughs> up in full training gear last week. Fine, uh... not trip yet. Um, who's our second free kick taker? I've got a feeling I'm going to score a free kick. It's probably Murphy, isn't it? It'll be Britain. No, it might be. It depend on where it is. It'll be Fabian Shea. Mm. Aye, give Fab a goal. He's not scored for a while. Yeah, yeah. Busy. we'll give we'll give would, Fab would, a goal. Would, would you would you be happy and take a point right now? Yes. No, I would. I would. Uh, so I'm the one predicting a you draw. That's been one point. <laughs> you wouldn't be happy with the point that no. I, I would. I think you know, I'm given not. that they're decent at home and and you know everything that we've talked about in the last yeah. half an hour. Yeah. So if, if it's if it's I, a point I and a clean bill of fine. health, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'd take. That's I would, it. gent. Yeah, I would. But I think the way because of where we are as a club now, I just think you cannot be taking a point at Fulham. I think you've got to go for the win. But obviously, mm. yeah, with all yeah. the surrounding context and everything. Yeah, a point and everyone comes out with all the limbs intact. That's fair enough, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm very much in the same... Well, I'm a bit, a bit of both of you, to be fair, but I think that we will come out of it with a point. Um, I'm actually going to go for a 2-2, and I think it's going to be right on the knife edge as well, and it really could swing either way, like we talked about before, um, about most of the games in the Premier League at this moment in time. Um, I think it'll be really close. I do think that Isaac will get on the score sheet again for not... Many other reasons other than the fact that we're all Newcastle supporters. We all like Isaac and he's also in my fantasy team. So I, I could do with him getting a goal. Um, and for me, the other one, I'm going to say Gordon. I think Gordon will come straight back in and, and grab himself a goal as well. Um, Not true, yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I agree with Nickel as well. I think for, for Fulham, I think uh, Munez will probably, he might even get both of them for Fulham because he has been in some outstanding form recently and he's really banging in the goals. And I think... He got that last minute equaliser down at um, Sheffield United the other week. So, yeah, I think uh, he's going to be the man for them. They've got a good couple of um, set piece takers. They've got Harry Wilson and Andres mm. Pereira who can take. Yeah. So, please, no daft fouls. 
No. <laughs> no, definitely not. And Dubravka, well, we, come and claim a cross for once, please. We, I'm we on my knees. Managed, <laughs> we sort of managed to not give any daft fouls away against West Ham because I don't remember James or Prowse taking a free kick from the outside of the box in the, like, the the danger area of the day and that. So we sort of did all right. And to be honest, if Bruno's avoiding a yellow card, then he's not really fouling anybody to the point where we're giving away a free kick anyway. So he's doing all right in that respect. Um, I think it's half the yeah. problem, to be fair, is that we, if someone gets past the midfield, we just have to stand with our hands up and not touch them, which <laughs> yeah. doesn't help either. Just wait, just wait for the first game after Spurs when Bruno's allowed to like swipe some. Get, get a straight red warning after all that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't say that because that'll be three. Um, yeah, so yeah, um, yeah, so that's gonna. I think that just about covers it. Have we missed anything, boys? Do you want to add anything on before we finish? No, we're just let's try and be positive. We're going to win. Come on. <laughs> we're not being we're not being negative. We just still got Everton in our head. That's the problem, yes. I think. A point or three and a clean bill of health, please. That's what we want on Saturday. That is positive. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, so yeah, for me, for Andy, and for Nico, would like to thank you all for watching and for listening. And we will see you on the next one. See you later. Drop.